Shankar Vidya Mandir High School and Junior College welcomes all the 12th standard computer science students. Today, we are going to learn with the last concept of pen configuration from Unit 1, that is 8085 microprocessor. This is the pen configuration of 8085 microprocessor. There, almost all the pins we have elaborated in detail, starting with the power supply, secondly, clock signal, thirdly, multiplex address and data bus, higher order address bus, serial in output signals, interrupt signals. Last class we have discussed about the control and the status signal. Today we are going to discuss about the externally initiated signals and lastly the DM. So firstly let us learn which are the three, uh, the three signals that comes under externally initiated are recent in ready and recent out. So let's learn about the pin ready. The pin ready plays a very very important role in 8085 microprocessor. It is an input signal used by the microprocessor to send whether the peripheral is ready to transfer data or not. The signal is used to delay the microprocessor until a slow responding peripheral is ready to send or accept data. If the ready is high, the peripherals are ready for the data transfer and if it is low, the microprocessor waits for integral number of clock pulses until it goes high. It is used to synchronize the slower peripherals to the faster processor. So let me explain about the ready pin in detail. The peripherals are very slow. The microprocessor speed is very fast. The microprocessor has to depend on the peripherals for transferring data. But since the speed of the peripheral is slow, if the microprocessor reduces the speed, it will affect its efficiency. So that is the reason we have introduced here the ready signal. So when the peripherals are slowly transferring the data, in the meanwhile, the processor will perform some other task. So what if the processor is performing some other task, if the peripherals are ready for the data transfer, what they will do, they will make the ready pin high. So when the ready pin is high, the peripherals are ready for the transfer and if it is low, the microprocessor waits for integral number of clock cycles until it goes high. So this signal is just used to synchronize the faster processor and the slower peripherals. So again I am explaining, peripherals are very slow, my processor is very fast. If the processor reduces the speed, its efficiency will be affected. That is why we introduce the concept of ready. So ready is a pin in microprocessor which is used to sense whether the peripherals are ready for the transfer or not. The microprocessor will do some work internally. So when the ready pin goes high, the, uh, the processor will come to know that the peripheral is ready for the transfer and if it is slow, the processor has to wait till the peripherals get ready for the transfer. Reset pin. You can see there is a bar about reset pin which indicates it is an active load signal. Uh, we have already discussed about bar in uh, read also, write, IO slash M bar and even INTA bar. Reset pin. When the signal on the pin goes low, the program counter is set to 0, 0, 0, 0 H. That means this pin will be active only if it is made low. The, when it is made low, the program counter is set to 0000H. The buses are twice stated and the microprocessor unit will be held in reset condition as long as reset is applied. So the buses are twice stated. Already we have explained about the concept of twice state. It includes three state, high, low and high incident state. So the buses will be price data and the MPU, that is the microprocessing unit, will be held in the reset condition as long as reset in is present. It also resets the interrupt enable and HLDA pin. That is, it also resets the interrupt enable flip flop. It is INTA. What is INTA? Interrupt acknowledgement. Do you remember? We have learned that is interrupt and HLDA that we will learn further. 
So in simple words, what my research team is going to do? The research team is just going to refresh the microprocessor in other words. In simple terms, it is just going to refresh the microprocessor by resetting it. So once it is reset, what will happen? The processor, uh, microprocessor unit, the process will be titrated, the program counter will be 0, 0, 0, H, all the registers that are involved in the processing will be reset to 0, 0. So resetting is just, it is a pin which is going to simple words to refresh the microprocessor to make it for you to remember. Next is reset down. It indicates that the NPU is been reset. That is, this pin has a close relationship with the previous pin that is reset in. This indicates that the NPU, that is microprocessing unit, is been reset. That is, it is refreshed. So all the peripherals that is connected to the NPU has to also reset itself. That is, it is connected to peripherals to reset them when NPU is reset. So reset out, reset in is for the microprocessor to refresh itself and reset out is a signal which is connected to all the peripherals which are connected with the microprocessor to inform that the NPU is reset so the peripheral has to reset itself. So here all the peripherals will be also be 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, that's all about the function of reset in and reset out. So reset in is for the microprocessor and reset out it is for the peripherals. So reset in is connected to the MPU and reset out it is for the peripherals. It is connected to the peripherals. So by this we complete the concept of externally initiated signals. So we started with the ready which is used to inform the microprocessor to sense whether the peripherals are ready for the transfer or not. It is basically used to synchronize the speed between the faster processor and the slower peripherals. Second is reset in. Simple words to remember, it is used to refresh the microprocessor. Reset out, it is used to refresh the peripherals that is connected with the processor. Now, let's go with the DMA signal. DMA stands for direct memory access. There are only two pins which is in, involved in this process that is hold and HMD. So before going ahead and elaborating about this pen, let me discuss or you can say let me revise about the concept of DMA that we have learned in our level standard. Direct memory access. For the process of direct memory access, we are going to use a controller and that controller is called as DMA controller. So first let me say what is direct memory access. It is the process through which the data will be transferred from one device to another device without the processor intervention. That is, there will be no role of processor. So, the data will be straight away transferred from one device to another device without the involvement of the processor. Initially, if two peripherals want to transfer the data, first it goes to the processor and then it goes to the other peripheral. But if the processor is busy with some other work, it will ignore the request of the peripheral. So the peripheral's times are wasted. That is why we brought the concept of DMA. So DMA is a process through which we can directly transfer. Now why it requires the help of the processor? That's a question mark because in order to transfer the data, we require buses. So buses is in the control of processor. That is why we depend on the processor for the transfer. Only in the initial part. So a DMA controller will be placed in between the peripheral and the processor. So when the peripheral want to transfer the data, a DMA will send a signal to the microprocessor in requesting to give the bus. And once received the request, the processor will complete up the current task and it will release all the buses to the DMA. And with the help of the DMA, the data will be transferred from one peripheral to another peripheral. During the entire process of DMA, 
your microprocessor will be in the sleep mode or we can say internal processing may continue. Once the transfer is being done, automatically microprocessor will retain the bus. This is the concept of DMA that we have learned in our 11th standard. Right? Now, in 11th standard, we have learned two pins in DMA process. One was bus request and what other was bus grant. Bus request was the signal sent from the DMA controller to the microprocessor requesting to give the bus. And bus grant was the acknowledgement for it. So when I was teaching you these two pins, I clearly said these two pins you will learn in 12th standard by other name. So here these are the two pins, hold and HLD. Hold is nothing but it is bus request. HLD is nothing, it is the bus grant. Now let us discuss about this pen in detail. Hold. It indicates that a peripheral such as DMA, direct memory access controller, is requesting the use of address and the data buses. So this is the signal which is sent from the DMA controller to the microprocessor requesting to give the bus so that the other device can use it to transfer the data. Having received a hold request, the microprocessor releases the use of the bus as soon as the current machine cycle is completed. So, what will the processor do? It will complete up the current task, whatever it is performing, and it will release all the bus to the DMA controller. Internal processing may continue. So, internal processing, if it is there, the processor will do with the uh, do internally but it can't perform any useful task because there is no bus in its hand. If there is no internal processing, the microprocessor will go to the sleep mode. So, hold is nothing. It indicates that the peripheral such as DMA is requesting the use of bus. Hold is, is equivalent to your bus request. Once received the hold, the microprocessor will release the use of the bus as soon as the current task is completed. What is a machine cycle? We will discuss in the next class. Internal processing may continue. The processor regains the bus after the removal of the whole signal. When the transfer has been done, automatically the bus's control goes in the hand of microprocessor. So only for a short period till the data is transferred from one device to another device, the uh, buses will be in the control of DMA. So this is equivalent to my bus request. HLDA. HLDA stands for hold acknowledgement. A hold output indicates to a peripheral that the hold request has been received and the microprocessor will relinquish the control of the bus in the next clock cycle. After the removal of the hold request, HLDA goes loose. Hold request pin is, uh, sorry, HLDA pin is similar to your INDA pin students. Do you remember that uh, when an interrupt, INDA arises, the processor accepts the interrupt and by acknowledging it so that the peripheral doesn't disturb again and again. Similar is the HLDA pin. So HLDA is a signal which is sent from the processor to the peripheral informing, peripheral is nothing here but the DMA informing that the request has been received, the processor will release the bus in the next clock cycle. Once the transfer has been complete, automatically there is no role of DMA and the HLDA goes low. Uh, we have discussed about this hold instruction in detail as well as HLDA. The hold instruction in the previous class uh, if you remember the last point of read, write and HO, IO slash MBAR, it is tri-stated during hold and halt instruction. So hold is the pen that we have discussed here and HLDA, uh, sorry, HALT that is the halt instruction that is used to stop the microprocessor. So I told in the last class that we will explain about hold in this class. We complete the entire pin configuration of APUC card. So it is the 40 pin IP which is arranged in this. It has a notch. The notch plays a very, very important role.
because with the help of the notch we will be able to identify the number from where it is starting from so we have discussed about different categories clock signals power supply interrupt signals multiplex address and data bus higher order address bus control and status bus and serial in output signals you can see here some of the pins are high when it's working and some of the pins are low so today we have discussed about dma signals and externally initiated signals so by this we complete the pin configuration of 8085 microprocessor here is a diagram which shows again the pin configuration of 8085 microprocessor you can see already we have discussed about each and every pin in detail in each and pin every pin there is an arrow so you can see some of the arrow is inward some of the arrow is outward and some of the arrow is bidirectional so you can see here the bidirectional arrow is only pin that is the multiplex address and data bus but the rest of the arrows they are inward as well as outward so inward means it is from the in output devices or you can say from the peripherals to the processor if it is outward means it is from the processor to the uh, peripherals so the pin con configuration has been done by this case Thank you students.